briefly i just briefly take you through the facts of the case so the petitioner in this case kaiba amreen had filed a suit for dissolution of marriage based on cruelty uh, non payment of dowry non payment of maintenance and for recovery of her dowry articles and uh, for medical expenses um this suit was decreed in her favor by the family court um but was set aside uh the decree was partially set aside by the appellate court and the dissolution of marriage was converted to dissolution by khula which was then challenged by the petitioner uh in the peshawar high court through a writ petition and it was the judgment of the appellate court was upheld and so the judgment of the peshawar high court was now before the supreme court now the ju- the supreme court was looking at two issues here whether the petitioner was entitled to claim a decree of dissolution of marriage on the ground of cruelty and whether the appellate court when it converted the initial decree from dissolution of marriage based on the ground of cruelty to khula whether it could do that now uh, it's important to understand that there are two modes of um, divorce that women have access to when they go to court one is under um, one is the mode of khula which is the islamic right to divorce which is you know when the marriage uh, a woman will go to court and say that you know this marriage has irretrievably broken down and you know i cannot live with this man and the court um under the family courts act is bound to grant a decree of khula there is no questions asked there there is no requirement of proof or evidence to be submitted there it a khula can be granted just based on the oral statement of the woman now the second mode of dissolution of marriage comes under the dissolution of muslim marriage act 1939 section 2 of that act lays down certain grounds based on which a woman can go to court and ask for a dissolution of marriage so the grounds there include cruelty a desertion by a husband whether if the husband has been uh, sentenced to imprisonment of more than 7 years and other certain grounds now the uh, difference that we need to understand between these two modes is that when you're filing a claim under the dissolution of muslim marriage act one procedurally you are required to um uh submit evidence in court so you know the normal trial procedures uh, they they all come into play but sometimes why women prefer or why a woman would file a, a suit under dissolution of muslim marriage act when it's procedurally more difficult than the normal khula mode is that under uh, law when you ask for khula the uh, different provinces have different laws but you are required to return a certain amount either the entirety of your dower amount your so the woman is asked to give that up or a certain portion of it but under the dissolution of muslim marriage act scheme you do not have to give up dower now in this particular case what happened was that this initial decree was granted uh, under the dissolution of muslim marriage act on grounds of cruelty but then the appellate court uh, converted that uh, decree into the dissolution by khula and directed the petitioner to return to her husband five tolas of gold or you know equivalent like the equivalent market rate to it so the supreme court here stepped in and basically said that so they said a few things firstly they said that you know the appellate court can only reappraise um the evidence to look at whether it's in conformity with the settled principles of law but and secondly what they said was that you know the woman had sufficiently established that the husband was cruel to her so the uh, high uh, the you know appellate bodies both the appellate court uh, in peshawar and the peshawar high court could not have reinterpreted evidence to say that you know there was no cruelty proved they said that you know there was sufficient um, evidence on record that established cruelty so some of the instances of cruelty that this petitioner had alleged was accusations of immorality desertion when she was pregnant refusal to pay her delivery costs uh, forcing her to submit her salary in a joint account and something that uh, i you know so you know, and so this kind of takes us to this other idea of what constitutes cruelty right cruelty doesn't necessarily have to be physical cruelty it can also be mental cruelty and the court also kind of expands on what constitutes cruelty they refer to different jurisprudential texts to lay out that cruelty can be mental it can be um, you know it sort of you have to establish a pattern of conduct which makes it so difficult for a woman to live for her live with her husband and something that you know i would while i was reading this judgment something that you know the court pointed out and i found really interesting was that the appellate court when you know it he was looking at all these alleged instances of cruelty said that you know these are normal things that happen uh, in regular family so they can't amount to cruelty 
and the second thing they said that when they were appraising evidence they said that the petitioner because she had made a statement in court that she earned um, a salary which was greater than her husband that alluded to arrogance this you know this bring, brought home for me the fact that how courts generally be- there's such a pervasive bias biasness against women in our courts that just a simple statement of her saying that you know she was in a better financial position than her husband was construed to be you know arrogance on her part so it's a very interesting judgment um, and it's a it's a good judgment in terms of how it kind of you know uh, hammers down this idea of a you know what can cruelty be and it also kind of uh, sets strict parameters as to you know what appellate courts can do when they're appraising evidence